All right, everybody. We're back with the final part of take two of the Bears offseason <coughs> simulation video. Uh, we're going to get right into it, but if you guys are new here, please drop a like and a subscription, as well as maybe hit that bell to notify you of any future videos. There will be more videos coming your way. <coughs> now, as we look back at the draft, I would say we hit an incredible draft that all Bears fans would be excited about. We got a one of the top very few players in the draft, arguably top three. I'd say Anderson, Carter, and maybe B. John Robinson. Uh, granted, running backs a, a lesser position in terms of value. I mean, we maybe got the most valuable player in the draft at number six. And by trading back, we were allowed to we were able to pick up an extra first round pick and two second round picks. And it was fair value according to the draft pick chart, which all teams use. This was a home run draft, in my opinion, at least at the top. Uh, we pick Will Anderson. Uh, he's hopefully going to solidify one of our edge rushing positions for the long-term future. And then we also circle back and we get a difference maker at wide receiver with Jordan Addison in the second, uh, with the second pick of the first round. We get three picks in the second round, adding two to our original one pick. And we get Keely Ringo, one of the top corners in the draft, arguably maybe the most gifted in terms of physical attributes. He's a little uh, clean up when it comes to his technic uh, technical skills. We get a, a running back with a lot of explosion, speed, and uh, pass catching ability, similar to Alvin Kamara in my mind, with Jameer Gibbs. And then we get Blake Freeland to round out that offensive line at the right tackle spot, which should now be one of the top five offensive lines in the NFL, if you look at, uh, his, uh, you know, one through five, Braxton Jones, Isaac, Ethan Posich, Tevin Jenkins, and Blake Freeland, that should be a top-tier offensive line. Depth does have me a little bit worried. And then we do get, fill up depth at a number of positions here later in the draft. But if you look at our 90-man roster, looking at the offensive side of the ball, our skill positions look a whole lot better than they did even one year ago. Our offensive line at the starting level is really good. Our depth, it's a little suspect, not going to lie. But our defense has also been overhauled to be absolutely at minimum an average defense and a young defense in the same breath. It's a defense that is really setting the, the base layer to be built into something nice in the coming years. The one thing I will say and most Bears fans will probably say, is three technique is the absolute most important position in Matt Eberflus' defensive system. And we did not hit a home run at three tech technique this offseason. I would agree. But what I would say is Dalvin Tomlinson is a nice piece to complement the three technique. And Kobe Turner and Jonah Tavai, I think they can do the job at three technique Obviously, it's not the game changer we want, but they can do the job until we identify that game changer in the future. Plus, maybe we get lucky and one of these guys turns out to be a stud. Do we bank on it? No. But, you know, you got Will Anderson next to him. You got Delvin Tomlinson next to him. Maybe they can make some noise. You never know. Our linebacking core, solid. You know, we got a little depth that's young now, which I like. But realistically, we're probably going to need a game changer here in the coming years. Our secondary can be very, very good. Our secondary and our offensive line have the potential to be very strong units across the league. If they fill in all these green tagged positions with, you know, undrafted free agents, free agents in general, et cetera, we're looking at 91 players. You know, is it the strongest roster in the league? Absolutely not. Is it a massive upgrade from what it was this past year? In my opinion, absolutely. Now, if we look forward towards what could the 53-man roster potentially look like, this is what we're looking at here. Um, you know, Peterman might be starting over Toon at the second position, whatever, but I think both those guys make the roster. At the third running back spot, a lot of people like Evans over Ebner. I would probably guess that the, the, the GM sticks with Ebner since he drafted him, but, you know, you never know. I really like Jameer Gibbs. I really think it's going to be a nice compliment to Herbert. There's such different types of backs. 
I think that could be a backfield that's even better than Monty and Herbert were, to be honest. Um, not much to say a tight end or fullback, but a wide receiver, I mean, that's a core that's got some potential. You know, is it going to be great? No, but it's not going to be bottom of the league. Mooney comes back healthy, plays that slot. Addison should be a good player. You know, Granite Young on the outside. We need Chase Claypool or, or, or probably Harry to step up and be a big body receiver. Probably the strong likelihood is Claypool. Um, you know, maybe Claypool serves, serves his role for a year, and then next year we're looking to replace him with a true difference maker. It's probably more of a realistic scenario that we're looking at. But, you know, for this year, we'll take it. I like Jordan Addison long term, and I, I like Darnell Mooney in the slot. This offensive line, the starting unit, can be beautiful. Second unit scares me. Not a ton of depth. Um, you know, Borum's probably a swing tackle. Leatherwood's probably backing up the, the guard positions, although Jatire Carter did come in and play decent late in the season. This is probably the biggest weakness of the, of the offense. Maybe if, if Kramer's not up to snuff, maybe they, you know, they practice squad him again and bring in, you know, maybe some kind of veteran guy similar to what the Schofield or Riley Reef situations were. Bring in some veteran that, you know, can at least in a pinch step in and somewhat hold their own. Does it make me kick myself that we didn't sign Sam Mustafer? Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I think it was still the right decision. The defense, like I said, three technique leaves a little bit to be desired, but there's no disputing that this front seven is a, a huge upgrade. Um, on the front seven that was in 2021-2022 season. I'm sorry, the 2022-2023 season. Um, that front seven was an absolute laughing stock. This front seven, no reason they shouldn't be, you know, middle of the league, average um, average front seven with uh, some opportunity to get better. Uh, Will Anderson, Kobe Turner, both be young. Artie Key's still relatively young. Um Sanborn's super young. Okariki's relatively young. I mean, you got some opportunity to build a base there. And then this secondary, I think, uh, is not only young, but has the potential to be something very good for some years. So I like that. I will add a note that I think we I think we say goodbye to Cairo Santos this year. I think uh, we need to get a kicker that is capable of making, you know, close to 60, even if it's not at a great clip. You got to have the possibility. You got to be able to give your a chance beyond like 52. Like Santos, I don't think has ever made anything for the Bears longer than like 52, 53 yards. And even then, it's like sometimes he doesn't even get it there. I've loved them, especially after all our kicking struggles that we had as a franchise. But I think that we probably move on to him and get somebody with a little bit of a bigger leg. Um, I do have DeAndre Houston Carson staying despite being like a fifth safety. I think he's got a lot of versatility as a defensive back. I think he could step in and play slot if needed, asking Kendall Vildor. But I, I, I see a little more value in keeping him than anybody else that was listed as a as a depth player here. Um, you know, do I think this is, you know, uh, the – the 53-man roster uh, or anything close to it, probably not. But in this simulation, this is the way it's shaped out. If it's shaped out like this, I mean, you still got probably 85, 90, 100 million in cap room. You got a nice young roster, uh, solidified offensive line, solidified secondary, nice young piece of Will Anderson that could potentially be a game changer for years. Jordan Addison is a, Potential bona fide, I don't want to say wide receiver one, but a, a legitimate starting wide receiver in the league. Jameer Gibbs can be a very solid running back as well. I mean, we're starting to get field some pieces here, some protection. This is a team that can be competitive. Uh, absolutely, if this if this was a roster heading into the next year, I'm hoping for a playoff appearance. Do I think we're going to be world beaters? Do I think we're going to be, you know, Competing for a buy? Absolutely not. Do I think we compete for the NFC North? I think so. I think with the with the Lions up and coming, they're probably them along with the Vikings are probably the favorites, and the Packers are solid too. We'll see what happens with Aaron Rodgers. But 
None of those teams scare me so much that I don't think we're going to be competitive. It's not like the Packers from five, six years ago. This is a team right here that going into opening day, uh, you are trying to compete to win that NFC North and at worst case get a wild card spot and take your chances in the playoffs. You hope to see that next step from Justin Fields. If you don't, maybe next year you consider moving on from him. But you're really hoping to see a, a next step, especially in the passing game from Fields. And you're looking to see the defense go from probably the worst in the league to respectable. Matt Eberflus is supposed to be a defensive coach. This defense was a tr- an atrocity this year. Maybe some of it by design with the tank. But uh, there's no reason that with a roster similar to this, they couldn't be a respectable defense. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. Comment below and tell me your thoughts. Would you be happy with a re- with an offseason like this? I think as a Bears fan, I think this is realistic, but I think it is uh, a positive, you know, exciting offseason. You can't get unrealistic, but with the number one pick and the most money in free agency, I don't think it's unrealistic to expect some great change. This is your boy, Glenn. Thanks for watching. Till next time, I love you. Peace.